What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another quality recipe video. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make your very own sourdough loaf of bread. Now the best sourdough loaves are what they call a high hydration loaf, which is essentially the amount of water to flour in the loaf itself. This one is more of a beginner, like I was saying, which is at a 70% hydration, which is just getting into that high hydration amount. Some sourdoughs can be 80, 85, 90% water to flour ratio, which is incredibly difficult to work with. It does make a really nice product, a lot of nice bubbles in it, but that's a bit more advanced. Now sourdough can be very difficult to work with. Tons of different things can go wrong, but the most important part is having a mature, active starter. You can learn more about the starter in my first video in the sourdough series, where I show you how to make a sourdough starter from scratch. Everything you need to know should be in that. If not, leave a comment below and I'll get right back to you on it. So yeah, once you have a really good starter, we're ready to start making bread. So let me show you how to make it. All right, so once your sourdough is nice and ready, I've been feeding this for the last two days, about two times a day, so it's ready to go. So I'm gonna be making my levain in the morning with a one to one to one ratio of starter, water, and flour. So for this recipe, it's gonna be 100 grams each of water, flour, and starter. If you wanna make it the night ahead and save some time the next morning, by all means go ahead. I would just reduce the ratio to one to two to two, so one part starter, two parts flour, two parts water. Give that a good mix, make sure there's no flour, unhydrated, no lumps. So once that's done, we're gonna cover it with a cloth and put it into a warm spot. I like using an oven turned off just with the light on. It's gonna create that perfect temperature of about 75 to 80 Fahrenheit. And we're gonna leave it in there for a total of four hours to let it mature. So three hours in, we're gonna start to make our autolise. So to this, we're gonna add 945 grams of all-purpose flour, 210 grams of spelt flour, 26 grams of salt, and 45 grams of vital wheat gluten. Now this ingredient is super important. It's what's gonna allow us to actually use just all-purpose flour instead of bread flour. It's gonna increase the protein amount, which is gonna make the dough stronger and hold its shape a whole lot better than just plain all-purpose. And also 800 grams of water. I've had that water sitting in the warm spot alongside the levain for the last three hours now, just to make it come up to temperature. So now we're just gonna mix it up. Feel free to use a rubber spatula or a wooden spoon or a dough whisk. I highly recommend getting in there with your hands. It's a good idea to feel the different stages of the dough from the beginning right to the end. It's okay if the dough looks super shaggy. The point of this is just to hydrate all the flour and start that slow process of developing gluten. So we're just gonna cover that with a damp towel and set that right beside our levain for the next hour and a half. So to test if your levain is ready, just grab a little bit of water and dip a tiny bit of your starter into there. If it floats, it's good to go. So now we're gonna add all of our starter, which is 300 grams of it, to our autolise mix. So to start by dimpling in the levain, then you can start folding it together. You could even start pinching it you really just want to get it all nicely incorporated into the dough. So after a couple of minutes of mixing, we're going to dump it out onto a really clean counter. Then we're going to start to knead it. So what I like doing is grabbing the sides, lifting it up, turning it a quarter turn and slapping it down. Repeat this for about three to five minutes. This is going to help really well with developing all the gluten we need to hold that structure. After three to five minutes of that, Transfer it back into your container or your bowl with the lid back on and then we're gonna rest it in our warm spot for 30 minutes. After that 30 minute rest, bring it out and we're gonna start our stretch and folds. We're gonna be doing four rounds of this every 45 minutes. So to perform a stretch and fold, lift up each side of the dough as far as it can go without tearing and fold it back into the center. Do a little quarter turn and repeat that. So again, four folds per stretch and fold, and we're gonna be doing four of those every 45 minutes. And make sure to put it back into your warm spot during every rest. So after about four hours of this and four folds, it should look something like this. It should be almost doubled in size, nice and jiggly and if it is, then we could start to pre-shape our doughs. So once it is, we can dump it onto the table, just let the dough fall out with its own weight, 
Then with wet hands, we can extend the dough a little bit, just making it a little bit bigger. And then with a little bit of flour, just run it down the middle. And then with a bench scraper, just divide the dough into two. Move one out of the way. And then again, with wet hands and a wet scraper, we're gonna stretch it out a little bit more just to make it a bit more manageable. And then we're gonna fold the top down to the middle. Also the bottom to the middle. And then each side over those right into the middle. Once that's done, using your bench scraper, flip it over so the seam side is at the bottom, hit it with a little bit of flour. And then using your bench scraper in your hand, try to roll it around, pushing it back into itself to create a nice tight little round ball. Repeat that for the other dough, and then we're gonna let it rest for about 10 to 15 minutes. While it's resting, we could prepare our bannetons. So to flour them, we're gonna be using rice flour. You can use white rice flour or brown, doesn't really matter, but rice flour is really good for preventing the dough becoming really sticky while it's proofing in the fridge overnight. So after our little rest, using a bench scraper, we're gonna flip it over. Again, wet hands, wet bench scraper, and fluff it up a little bit just to make it a little bit bigger. And then taking the top, fold it down about two inches, and then we're gonna to start to stitch the dough. Do this by pulling the left to the center and then the right just over that left. And then repeating that about four times until you get to the bottom. Then take the bottom and tightly roll it up into a nice little log. You wanna do this tightly, but also gently so you don't damage all the bubbles that we've created. Use a bench scraper, kinda of seal the bottom of it. Sprinkle a little bit with flour, and then set that aside and repeat for the other loaf. So once both loaves are nicely shaped, using your bench scraper, carefully lift it up, flipping it over so the seam side is facing up, and drop it into your prepared banneton. Hit that with a little bit more flour, and then we're gonna place each loaf into its own bag. You could either use a plastic bag or a big Ziploc bag. Doesn't really matter, we're just trying to keep the air off of it. So we're gonna pop that into the fridge for 12 to 18 hours. This is gonna help slow down the fermentation, which is gonna increase the flavor, and it's also gonna make it more digestible due to the proteins breaking down. So let's talk a little bit about how we're gonna cook it. I'm gonna be showing you two different methods. The first one, which is by far my favorite, is with the Dutch oven. Dutch ovens are great because they can hold the heat really well. They have big heavy lids, and it's really gonna encourage a nice oven spring in our loaf. So about an hour before you plan on baking your loaf, heat your oven up to about 500 degrees Fahrenheit, basically as hot as it can go with your Dutch oven in it. Once your oven and Dutch oven are ready to go, you could bring out your loaf. So usually scoring is done with a bread lom. If you don't wanna go ahead and buy a lom, you can buy a pack of razor blades and attach it to a chopstick. So scoring your loaf is really important mainly because we're trying to give it an area for the steam to escape. Steam's gonna escape no matter what. We just wanna tell it where to come out because if we don't, it's gonna find the weakest point, which could be the bottom or the side. So it's mainly for aesthetic purposes. So grab a nice big piece of parchment paper, dust lightly with flour, and then carefully tip your dough onto it. So when we score, we're gonna try to keep the blade at a 45 degree angle Go from the top right to the bottom and preferably in one long slash roughly about a half an inch deep i like adding a little bit of a leaf pattern on the other side if you do this just make sure you don't go too deep so before we pull out the dutch oven just get a little spray bottle full of water this is going to help with producing some steam Pull out your Dutch oven and super carefully drop the loaf right into the middle. So give it a few sprays of the water, put the lid back on, and we're going to be baking this for 20 minutes at 500 degrees Fahrenheit. 
after the 20 minutes, remove the lid, drop the heat down to 425 degrees Fahrenheit, and we're gonna continue cooking for another 20 to 25 minutes. So once it's cooked to your liking, remove it from the oven. Carefully lift it out and let it cool on a wire rack. Now this is definitely the hardest part of bacon bread for me is the resting period. You really wanna let the bread rest for at least two hours. Some people say up to 24 hours, but usually two to six hours is ideal. So now for the other loaf, we're not gonna be using a Dutch oven. I'm just gonna show you how to do it straight onto a baking stone. So place your baking stones right in the middle of the oven and crank that heat back up to 500 degrees Fahrenheit and let that heat up for at least 45 minutes. Once your oven's ready to go, grab a deep baking tray and fill it with ice. Then again, lightly flour some parchment paper and gently tip out your dough. Give your dough a slash however you like. And then when we're all ready, we're gonna quickly open up the door, slide in the baking tray with ice and pop in your loaf right on top of the pizza stone. So just like the last one, after 20 minutes, we're gonna turn the heat down to 425 degrees and continue cooking for another 20 to 25 minutes. So there you go guys, as you can see, two slightly different outcomes. The one with the Dutch oven, the one without. I do highly recommend getting a Dutch oven. The product comes out way better, in my opinion, but it's not necessary. And you don't have to go spending $400 like I did on a Staub or a Le Creuset. You can get cheaper ones for about 50, 60 bucks. The Lodge combo cooker, it's about $100 Canadian, and that's a really good option for you. And plus you could also use it for anything else. So I don't think these are my best batches ever. I think that's just because my starter wasn't at its peak. I kind of rushed it a bit. It was getting a bit late in the day. I just, I just went along with it. But it just shows how important it is to have a really active bubbly starter. It's gonna make uh, the product so much better. Are these the loaves I'm most proud of? Definitely not. But am I still gonna eat them? Damn right I am. So that's it for me today, guys. If you like this video, feel like you learned something, hit that thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video.